will come to this lecture. In the last lecture, we had started discussing about the use case model. We had said that the use case model is the core model, is developed the first in a development process, a very simple model, easy to draw, easy to develop can be easily understood by the user also with very limited knowledge of software and computer. The use case model expresses the user's requirements and based on this model, the other models are developed by refining this model. Uh, in the last lecture, we are just seeing, we are just discussing how a use case is represented. The users how are they represented and the communicates relation between the users. We had discussed that uh, the line drawn between the use case and the actor is called as the communicates relation, it is association, association relation between the use case and the actor and uh, it indicates that they communicate with each other but it does not indicate that data is input, data is uh, displayed, it does not mean that, it just means that just at least the user or the actor invokes the use case, but of course, it may also so happen that the user input certain data at certain times and the system produces some results visible to the user at different times, but that is not mandatory. The user may just invoke and there may not be any data display, but typically the user not only invokes, but also inputs data and also some display is given to the user. This is another example of a use case diagram. The name of the software is Video Store Information System and one of the functionality here use case is rent videos. The clerk is authorized to rent videos, so possibly a customer gives a video choice chooses a video and uh, gives it to the clerk sitting there. The clerk issues the video through the system and then asks the customer to make payment for the video and uh, the takes the card from the user and uh, tries to make payment, but then there is a external software, external system called as the credit authorization service. As the card is given, it tries to authenticate the card using the credit authorization service and there are other use cases which are not indicated here. Now, let us look at a slightly larger example. This is a telephone order system, this is a e-commerce software where the orders are placed over telecom, uh, telephone, the customer telephones to the system and there is a message played, the user can choose which option and based on that he can check status of a order and the sales person also can check status of a order. They may be using different interface. The customer may be using a telephone interface and the sales person may be actually sitting in front of a terminal with keyboard and checking the status. The customer can place order on the telephone order system, the sales person also can place order and the shipping clerk 
checks out what are the orders that have been placed and fulfills the orders and enters the details here. And during placing order, the customer may establish credit and here a supervisor may check the credit establishment. But one thing is that the diagrams we just now saw, those are the high level functionalities represented straight away. But sometimes this high level functionality we need to split into smaller use cases. Let me just repeat that. Sometimes the high level requirements that are represented on the use case diagram need to be split into smaller use cases. There are two main reasons for why we want to split or factor into smaller use cases. One is that if the use case is very complex, then it becomes difficult to implement efficiently. As we go to the design process, we will see that a complex use case, the other diagrams they cannot even fit into a page, the other diagrams, the other models we develop based on a complex use case, those diagrams become extremely complex and cannot even fit into one screen or page, becomes difficult to develop and therefore, we split them into simpler use cases, so that the latter diagrams become simpler. Another reason is that if we can split a use case into simpler use cases, some of the simpler use cases may be part of other use cases. So, reuse becomes possible. If we split a use case, the small functionalities they are used across other use cases. So, it becomes possible to have the common behavior factored out in the use case diagram itself, so that the code is not repeated, the design is not repeated. Expert use case modelers, they know the common behavior across use cases and they factor this out in the use case diagram itself, so that the latter model becomes clean, efficient. Otherwise, if we do not factor out the use cases here, big chunks of functionality that are common among different use cases, we do not factor them out and represent here. In the latter design process, it is very likely that there may be duplication of design and the model will become complicated, later models may become complicated and also the code may have repeated the code. So, the code becomes large and more effort is required, but how do we factor? Given that a use case is complex, what do we do to factor it? Actually, there are three ways we can factor, one is called as generalization, the second is include and third is extend. Let us see how these three techniques generalization, include and extend can be used for factoring a complex use case. First, let us look at the generalization. Here, we represent them using an arrow one use case has been split into two use cases, the parent and child. The parent is the base use case or simple use case and the child is the more complicated use case, this is the complex use case, but some part of the child is already present in parent and this is inherited here. We do not repeat this here, it is ultimately implied or automatically inherited here. The child use case inherits the behavior of the parent use case 
and the extra behavior that is needed are represented in the child use case. So, we have effectively split a complex use case into two parts, one is the parent part, the basic functionality and the extra functionality is added here in the child use case and the parent behavior is uh, inherited by the child behavior. Of course, some of the functionality in the parent may be overridden by the child use case. Just to give an example of a generalization, let us say we have a use case for student registration before a semester starts. Now, there are different categories of students and uh, the use case becomes very complex if we try to have all categories of use case, all categories of students use the same use case. During the registration process, some of the functionalities are common. For example, they enter the roll number, verify the address, identify the subjects to enter uh, to credit and so on. But then in let us say the UG registration, they just need to indicate the hostel in which they will reside, whereas in a graduate registration, they may stay outside, but they indicate a bank account in which their um, scholarship will be credited. The graduate students get scholarship, the undergraduate students do not scho get scholarship the undergraduate students stay in the hostel and the graduate students do not stay in the hostel. This is the only difference otherwise the registration process is almost similar. So, the similar things are done here in the parent use case and the extra things are done here under the undergraduate registration and the graduate registration. There is another example here. Let us say in a library, the membership fee paid by a member has some procedure. For example, need to give the library member number, choose the duration, whether it want to have the membership for 6 month, year, 2 year, 5 year and so on. But then there are two options exist. One is that can pay through credit card or pay through the library pay card. In pay through library card, this the library card is internally validated and uh, the procedure is slightly different here. It is just the library card number and find out how much amount is there and debit from there. Whereas, here the code has to be sent, a specific code has to be sent to an external system authenticated and then the amount has to be debited and deposited in the library. So, a different interface comes and different procedure for pay through credit card and a different procedure in pay through library pay card. But then both of these inherit the pay membership fee, the basic procedures are both inherited in the pay through credit card that is enter the library membership number, select the duration for which the membership is to be renewed and so on. Now, let us look at uh, the include technique for factoring use cases. Here we use a dotted arrow look at the type of the arrow in the extent in the uh, inherits or the generalization we were using a solid arrow with a closed arrow head the notation is important because these are standard notations you must know that and here we use a dotted arrow with open arrow head arrow head 
and on that we stereotype it with include. This is the base use case and this is the common use case which can be included in more than one base use case. So, this is the behavior that we have factored out from the base use case and this behavior may get included in many use cases achieving reusability. Let us look at this diagram where there are two base use cases and these are the factored use cases and each of this include the common use case 1. So, the functionality for common use case 1 is elaborated and that serves towards both this. In the later design process, this will be elaborated into different models and that serves towards both of these. Otherwise, if we did not have this, we will develop the model corresponding to this as part of this and also part of this. So, it helps if we can identify the common functionality using the include relation, the base use case compulsorily includes these three use cases and the base use case 2 includes only this one. Maybe these are included by other use cases or maybe they are not included at all in other use cases does not matter. Now, let us look at an example of the include relation. Let us say during issue book, once a member tries to issue a book out, the book and the library membership code are scanned and then it is checked whether the book can be issued by checking whether any other user has reserved it. So, the check reservation functionality is invoked to check if any other user has in reserved the book. We say that the issue book compulsorily includes the check reservation use case. Similarly, when a book is to be renewed, the renew book use case is invoked and it uh, compulsorily includes the check reservation during the renew book process. If any other user has uh, reserved the book, the renew book will fail. It will say that the book has been reserved, you cannot renew the book. So, effectively in this diagram, we have factored the issue book and renew book into simpler use cases and also it serves in identifying the common use cases that are reused in both this that are part of both of this and this is developed only once otherwise there will be a duplication while developing the issue book and renew book. Now, let us look at the third way of factoring that is the extend. The notation is almost similar to the include relation, it is a dotted arrow with open arrow head, but then the stereotype is here extend. And also another thing to notice is that this is the base use case and uh, this is the use case which uh, is to be included part of the order item, but then optionally. In the include relationship, it is compulsorily included and there the arrow head was on this side and also it was written include, here it is on this side and 
we say extend. Here during the order item, the user let us say is trying to order an item on a e-commerce portal. During the order item, he may not need the catalog, he just knows the item code and is very familiar with the product, the warranty etcetera and just goes ahead and orders the item, uh, item without even looking at the catalog. But some users during the ordering process, they might need the catalog. So, there may be a button on the user interface for order item. If you click on that, the catalog will be shown. In the catalog, the details of the item would be annotated. For example, what is the item code, what is the warranty, price, etcetera, etcetera. So, by using the extend relationship, we split a use case into simpler use case, but then the factored use case is optionally included. Sometimes it may include get included in the order item and for some user they may not need this use case. Another thing is that uh, we might also indicate the extension point during uh, the include and extend. That is at what point of execution actually this is gets included or extended. We indicate that with this uh, line and after that we write the point of extension that is the gift wrap product may get invoked after the checkout. So, once the sale is performed and the checkout is done at that point the gift wrap product option will be shown and uh, it is possible to select the gift wrap product option and the product will get gift wrapped. If we do not select it here, then okay, it completes. So, the point at which the gift wrap option will be given, so that can be indicated here as after checkout. So, that is called as the extension point. This is a use case place order, which is uh, factored into many use cases and uh, see here these are to include the place order invokes or uh, includes the supply customer data use case, gets the customer data, includes the order product use case here the order procedure is carried out and also includes payment, arrange payment use case is factored into cash payment and credit payment. So, this itself is factored into two and also during the place order optionally the request catalog functionality may be invoked and this specific decomposition of the place order into smaller use cases incorporates all the three decomposition techniques that is include, extend and also the generalization. Now, let us uh, try to do one example, we will try to develop a use case for the video store information system. We have a informal text description and based on that we will identify what are the use cases. Remember that use case is a functionality to be performed by the system and we will identify the user who will invoke this functionality and then we will document each of these functionality as a use case and also connect them to the appropriate users. The first functionality is 
about entering the information about the video store. All the videos that the system uh, sorry the store owns need to be entered one by one into a database and uh, the database once created will be searchable by staff and customers to find whether a video exists. So, there are two huge cases actually here. One is that enter all the videos and then the searching. And once a customer borrows a video, that information is uh, entered. Again, this uh, borrowed information can be accessed by staff and customer and uh, it involves video database searching. The staff can uh, record the video rentals and the returns made by the customer and this also involves video database searching. The staff can maintain customer and video information that is they can delete some customers, delete some videos and so on. So, if we look at it these are the functionalities and there are some functionality which is included as a part of many use cases that is uh, video database searching. If we represent each of them, okay, there is another functionality the store manager can generate various types of reports. If we represent all of that in the form of a use case diagram, we will see that rent and return videos that is done by the staff, the customer can search for videos and uh, rent video and maintain video include search video. The staff can maintain customers and the manager generates reports. So, I have captured all the functionalities to be supported as was described in the text and represented that in the form of a use case model. So, with this uh, we will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture with uh, more examples and also we will see that this diagram is definitely a large part of the use case model but then we also need a systematic text description of the diagram. This diagram does not convey some information which will note down in a text description which will accompany this uh, model. This is the basic model, but it will be accompanied by a text description. We will stop here and uh, continue in the next lecture. Thank you.